Hi y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, today's video is another one in the series that I'm just calling raw and uncut because, well, that's what it is. It's raw and uncut footage. I'm turning the camera on and just letting it roll and you're gonna see every cast I make, all the good ones, the bad ones, and everything in between. If I catch a fish, great. If I catch a tree, well, by gosh, you're gonna see that too. So I'm gonna take a section of shoreline here. I'm gonna start here where I'm at and wake my way on downstream. I've got my gulp minnow set up here today. That's a one inch gulp minnow in the smelt color, 164th ounce jig head on my St. Croix Panfish Series rod. I'll catch a ton of fish on that bait and a variety of species. And that's what I'm hoping to get out here today. Just a mixed bag. No doubt we'll get a bunch of bluegill Hopefully maybe get some crappie mixed in, maybe some bass. You just never know. That's part of the fun ultralight fishing. You never know what's gonna bite and what's gonna be on the other end of the line. So I'm gonna make some casts here and we'll get the camera back in the chest again. I'm not turning this camera off today. Well, unless it overheats, which is always a possibility, but I'm not turning it off here until I'm done filming, which will probably be hour and a half, two hours from now. So first cast here let's see if we can get something something was hitting me right then my gosh we got one here first cast look at this some people say it's bad luck to catch a fish on the first cast but i i don't think it's ever a bad cast to catch a fish on whether it's the first one or the last one we starting out with the bluegill here y'all how about that i launched my kayak here in a creek this morning and i've come out to the main channel See you, Bluegill. Thanks for being number one, buddy. I've come out here to the main channel and pretty much just started. I picked this first tree here because it's kind of the first lay down here as I come out of this creek into the end of the channel. I'm just going to start here and work down. I'm in need of some catfish bait. I don't want any bluegill. If we catch any keeper sized crappie, I will throw them in the cooler, but. I had hoped to maybe see some schools of white bass or skipjack busting out here. And I was gonna take advantage of those too. I got my skipjack gear with me just in case. But just the short time I've been out here just pedaling through the creek and, and looking around out here in the main channel, it is, looks like it's pretty well dead out here this morning as far as skipjack and white bass activity. So I don't know if I'm gonna get any of those or not, but if we see them busting, if they come up, just surface eruption or whatever, we'll take off and try to get us a few. But in the meantime, I'm gonna throw this set up right here. Love my gulp minnows, love my ultralight. We'll catch us a few fish as we make our way along today. I don't have, all right, here's another one. I don't have my graph on this kayak no motor no electronics today we just old school fishing just fishing pole and a platform and a dang nice bluegill right here oh oh got me right in the foot buddy hey hey bluegill watch them fins now i got bare feet now tell you tell the people out there watching at home tell them hi that fish ain't got nothing to say to you people. That fish has a, got a bad attitude this morning, don't he? Tried to spike me right in the daggone foot, man. I'm out here in my bare feet because running out of time to do it. It's September now. We're we running out of warm temperatures here. Summer's coming to an end. I got to take advantage of every day I can. And, and here's another fish, buddy. We own some bluegill right here on this tree. I thought with this tree right here, it's being kind of the first lay down outside of this creek channel that I launched in, there'll probably be something on it and sure as the world. Could have fished the creek channel itself, but I wanted to come out here to the main channel to see if there was some surface activity going on. I didn't see anything in the creek as far as skipjack or white bass, but I thought maybe out here, the last raw and uncut video I filmed was a few miles upstream from here. And I got some skipjack there and I thought, well, if they're up there in the main channel, they'll be tearing it up down here. And 
Well, again, that's what I get for thinking. <laughs> Every time you think you know something about fish, they, they let me know I don't know a damn thing about them. Kind of like the women in my life. But I do know I got another one on right here. This tree's got some fish on it. I'm gonna sit here and keep catching them until they quit biting too. What do you think, Bluegill? You got a hook in the jaw, buddy. Give, give me it back. You done tore up my minna. There he is, man. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip this minna around here, see if I can get another fish or two on it. They've tore it up already. These, these bluegill, they're so excited to be on a YouTube video. They don't know, they don't know how to take care of that gulp minna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna forgive them, I guess. It's all like catching them. We'll just throw that thing over there and let it sink. Thought I had one hit me then, I was mistaken. I'm just letting that thing sink down on that tree and as it falls, them fish see it and they come up and, and hammer it. It kind of makes a, I've said this in other videos, but it kind of makes a darting motion. When you got it on that, on that jig head straight, it kind of darts just in and out as it falls. And that action along with the, the gulp scent, they're just, they just find it irresistible. We do have a little bit of color out here in the water today. We've got some rain the last few days and it's kind of stained the water, which is a nice surprise because this body of water is typically crystal clear. You oftentimes got 10 plus feet of visibility. So to have some rain come through like we did and kind of stain the water, I think it'll, I think it'll help the cause this morning. I'm gonna back it up a little bit and get over here where I can hit this tree at a better angle again. And then we're gonna, we're gonna move on downstream here. I'm gonna throw all the way down through here. And when we find stuff like this, there was something splashing around right there. When we find something like this, it's got a concentration of fish on it. We'll hammer it, we'll wear it out until they quit biting and then we'll move on to the next one. We'll hopefully find several places like this down through here. I'm gonna fish all morning. I'm gonna do about, I don't know, four hours or so. I'm just gonna leave the camera rolling for an hour and a half, two hours. The audience, you know, again, I'm just experimenting with this whole raw and uncut video concept. It's kind of just been a, the first one I did was an hour, an hour and a half, and then two hours. And I did a poll on my live stream the other night and most of the audience seemed to be in the consensus of the one to two hour range. So we'll shoot for an hour and a half to two hours today, just seeing how it's going. Ultimately, you all out there in the audience drive the bus. If people ain't watching two hour videos, well, that I ain't making two hour videos. It's that simple. <laughs> this here though, this is gonna be the last cast on this tree if I don't get bit. So if there's a bluegill down there on that tree, wants to be on a YouTube video today, you better bite right now. You better do it, bluegill. At least something down there that wants to be on video. All right, it's that daggone tree itself. I done got hung up here. I'm gonna get on top of this thing and try to work it free. If we were still catching fish one after another on this thing, I'd just break off and retie instead of getting over here on top of it. But since I'm ready to move on from this tree anyway, I'm gonna try to get this jig back. Ah. I feel like I'm pulling a branch up or something here. Oh no, I've got something all right. I wasn't snagged in a dang, oh man. 
I've caught the turtle, man. I thought I snagged in the tree. I had the daggone turtle. Let's get him up here. Is that a snapper? No, that's one of them old mud turtles. I may, I ain't got my net. I'm not going to get this thing. Listen, turtle, I want that jig back now. This is an un, unexpected surprise right here. Oh, no. Oh, no. You know what else I ain't got, y'all? Boy, we're in really bad shape today because I ain't got my pliers. I ain't got my pliers. Dang, man. <laughs> we batting a thousand here. We are batting a thousand today. I'm going to see if I can get this jig out of this turtle, though. I hate to leave that in him. If it was a snapping turtle, I'd say, heck with him. Cause I ain't messing no snapper, but this in here ain't gonna bite my hand off, so. The challenge is I got two pound test line and I don't have a net. So getting this thing up here long enough for me to get that jig head out, and especially since I ain't got my daggone pliers, they're in the other kayak. I used to have a set of pliers in this thing and I would knocked them out one day and I've been meaning to get me another pair. So in the meantime, I've just been going back and forth between kayaks just putting pliers in, but I totally forgot. Come here, turtle. I'm trying to save you now. We raw and uncut right now. We rolling, turtle. We rolling. We ain't got time for this. Come here now, buddy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Don't. Ow. Well, I'll tell you something, y'all. If you've tuned in to see some fishing action today, what you end up going to see is a daggone blooper video. That's what you're going to ultimately see today. That's what most of my channel is. I just edit the nonsense like this out <laughs> most of the time. Oh, he just broke off. I felt him hit my prop down there on the on the pedal drive. Crap, y'all. <laughs> dang on turn. I thought I was in that dang log over there. I was trying to work it free. There's a turtle. I hate that. I truly do. I hate that I didn't get that jig head back out of him. I, I don't like leaving turtles like that. I mean, again, if it was a snapper, it was going to bite my hand off. Heck with it. But that turtle... I would have ideally liked to have got that jig back, but I'm I'm an idiot. I'm out here unprepared. I got no net, <laughs> ain't got no pliers. All I got is a positive attitude and some gold minnows, and we're gonna roll with it. So I'm gonna get retied here, and then we're gonna move along. I do have scissors at least, so I can at least tie these jig heads on. Yeah, I'd knocked some pliers out of this kayak a while back and I keep I'm supposed to remember every time I go to the store to get me another pair and well, you know how it is. Get a little older, you can't always remember stuff. I remember it when I'm in here and I need them. The rest of the time I don't remember it. So we're gonna make do today. Hopefully we won't really need any pliers. If we do, we may have to improvise here with some scissors or something. All right, let's get us another gulp on. Got my peak up. That was a pretty big turtle though, wasn't it? I guess them are called mud turtles. I don't know. That's what I call them. I don't know if that's the actual name for them. I think they're like a soft shell turtle. We got all kinds of different turtles out here in East Tennessee. I can't, I can't keep up with them. Between the fish species and you know, every time I catch a bluegill, I call them all bluegill. But every time I catch one that's a different subspecies, people tell me about it in the comments, you know, and it'll be the same daggone way with the turtles. I'll call that turtle a mud turtle. 
I need to call him Leonardo or Donatello or something because the way he was pulling on me was like a daggo ninja turtle. But somebody will tell me what exactly the species and the Latin name and the actual name and address of that turtle. Somebody will tell me about it in the comments, guaranteed. Let's make another cast. We're gonna just work our way along here now. Make a few casts over here at these rocks. And I think we'll spend a lot of time on stuff like this that don't really have features to it. You know, I wanna hit stuff that's trees and lay downs and, and whatnot coming down through here, but I will make a few casts right in here just to see if, see if there's something, maybe a bass or something on these rocks. Look at that turtle, there he is again. He's trying to get on the video again, man. That turtle is hell bent on taking over this video. He comes up here again, I'm gonna give him an earful. He done stole my, my gulp minnow and my jig head, that thing will be on eBay. He's probably already got a buyer lined up for that in the time that I was retying. I bet you he done got that thing sold $200. He probably even forged my autograph on it, knowing him, seeing how he's acting. That turtle's out of control, man. You can't trust the turtle. Y'all, I'm telling you. Oh, here's a fish. Let's see what this is. We, we back on, we back out here now on what we came out here to catch. That's another bluegill. Ain't a bad one either. Bluegill, I'll actually gladly give you some camera time, buddy. Come up here. Come up here, bluegill. Now, what do you know? <laughs> He's got that jig a little deep. We're gonna take the scissors and try to just knock it free here. We're using scissors as pliers today, people. What a cluster, what a cluster this video is gonna be. <laughs> oh, go ahead, bluegill. Boy, I'm in bad shape today, y'all. Bad shape. I think I got it then. Yep, there it came. I took them scissors and I pushed it down a little farther to dislodge the hook and Pulled it out, by gosh. All right, let me get repositioned here. I told you y'all, when it's raw and uncut, you just don't know what you're gonna see. And it's a daggone cluster. People think, cause you know, I'm on YouTube and you know, doing this for a living or whatever, that I got my act together. I really don't. It's all, it's all in y'all's heads. It's all make-believe, really. Cause I'm as, I'm a big a klutz and what not is a lot of yous out there who fumble around on your fishing trips. It's just most videos that I'm cutting down and editing into basically just highlight films. You just don't see this kind of nonsense. <laughs> it's a good thing I edit most of that crap out too. Nobody would watch. We're back on the move again. Gonna make a few random casts down through here. I'll keep waiting for that turtle to pop back up. Try to get on the video again. I got a feeling we ain't seen the last of him. It's encouraging though to have caught so many fish so quickly. Because when I when I come out of this creek. I wasn't sure if I'd see any kind of action going on in the creek as far as skipjack and bass and stuff. But I really thought out here on the main channel, I would, I'd see some schools busting and whatnot, just based on what I saw there last week when I filmed that other 
ultralight video. But when I rounded the corner and saw nothing going on out here, I thought, man, this could be a this could be a rough day. But the good thing about this technique here, ultralight and, and gulp, is you're always gonna catch something. Even on even on tough condition days, you're gonna get bit. And we're off to a good start here this morning. Just with the number of fish I got. Let's just keep making our way down here. I don't I don't want to spend a lot of time right through here where they're not trees or logs or anything coming off in the water. Could be something down there that we don't see. Something that's fell down, but really as we make our way on down through here, you're gonna see all these overhanging trees and stuff coming off into the water and stuff. So I feel a lot better about throwing this jig around actual cover. It is calm and peaceful out here today. Other than my mouth, there was something splashing behind me over there. Other than my mouth flapping, it's just peace and quiet out here. It's foggy this morning. We had all that rain. It was kind of foggy. It's humid as all get out, but it's it's not it's not hot. I think it's in high 60s low 70s here this morning so perfect morning perfect morning to do some fishing and i was in the mood to do some ultralight fishing so by gosh we doing it we're rolling with it people no pliers no graph no motor just this fishing pole, some gulp minnows, and a can-do attitude. You can accomplish a lot in life with the can-do attitude. All them negative Nellies out there. Old, old prudes. They can't get through their day, but we're making it happen out here. We're gonna get something on that cast. Somebody bet me a somebody bet me a nickel I'm gonna catch a fish on that cast. Yep. I knew I landed up under that tree over there. I said I'm getting me one on that one. Ain't very big, but by gosh, I didn't bet you that I was gonna catch a big fish. I bet you I was gonna catch a fish. Next time, next time you bet me, you best clarify. You say, Justin, you're gonna have to catch a eight inch fish or something under there. See if I can make another decent cast. Might get another one right there. What do you think? Betting window's closing here. You think I'm gonna get one on it? Uh, not that time. Not that time, people. All right, we're moving on. And I'm on this fish kind of, kind of quickly down through here until we get on something that looks like it might hold some fish or an area that actually is holding fish and we're catching them. I'm going to spend a lot of time on any one spot right now. All of the shoreline down through here looks practically the same. It's just a just a steep, steep drop here. It's a rocky bank. Without the graph, I can't tell you an exact depth, but it's, we're probably, the kayak's probably setting 15 feet deep right now where we're at, because it just drops off so quickly. I ain't even hearing no birds or turkeys out here today. I mean, it's just, there's a fish. The only thing I hear is my drag pull a little bit. Get up here, bluegill. 
where's the rest of nature? Are they still in bed? All the birds and turkeys and stuff? You lucky, Bluegill, you lucky. This is an uncut video. That one right there wouldn't have made the, the cut on a normal video. I catch a lot of them that size right there, but I edit them out. But I can't edit them out if I ain't doing no editing. And that fish knew it. He knew that was his chance. Another one of them child stars, never to be seen again. Like that, like that kid from the movie Sixth Sense of Bruce Willis. He, he was like the star of that movie, but nobody ever seen or heard from him again. Child stars. Probably in rehab somewhere. That's where most of them child stars end up. It's probably where a lot of y'all gonna end up too, because watching me for an hour and a half, two hours, probably drive anybody to drinking. I thought I had a fish twice on there, but no. I'm gonna live dangerous here and try to throw way up under there. I hit one of them leaves, but I don't think I got the tree. No, we're good. We might catch something on that. Well, look at all these menace right here. I don't know if you can see them on... Oh, crap. I did go around that tree. Dang it. I'm going to go over and get that jig, but I'm going to try to show you it's here. I don't know if I can... I don't know if I can get over here on them without spooking them. There's all these... A big school of tiny minnows right here. You probably can't see on the camera there with the glare. But that's why this gulp minnow, the one inch size works so good. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but that's why it works so good because that right there, those schools of that, that's what these fish, the bluegill and bass, everything out here, that's what they're feeding on right now is that size, that, that one inch size really, that's in these big schools. They'll come up and, and you know, when you do see fish busting a school, that's what they're eating on. I gotta go over here and try to get this jig out. I threw around that branch and I thought, I'm actually gonna use my paddle, I think. Get over here. I thought I hit that tree. I didn't think I actually got in it, but sure as the world. And since I ain't editing anything out, I can't edit this part out. I'm gonna try to get this thing though. We done had a turtle try to get on this video. I hope we ain't got no snakes in this tree. There we go, there we got it. I don't mind a spider hopping off on this tree onto me. I ain't dealing with no snakes. Snake pops in this kayak, by gosh, they can have it. I'll be swimming back to the car. Well, now that I spooked every fish that was possibly under that tree, let's move on. This is gonna be the worst unedited, raw, uncut video I've ever done. This will be the last one right here because all the reviews on this video will be so bad. I'll get so many thumbs down on this, it'll, it'll just put me out of business. <laughs> but you know, that's why a lot of the people I think said that, that they like this kind of thing it's cause on a normal video, you don't see the reality of fishing, which is, you know, a lot of that right there where you make a bad cast and you end up in a tree or you hook a turtle and think it's a log or you leave a vital piece of equipment like your pliers in the other kayak and you got to improvise. That's just, that's the reality of fishing folks. It don't always go, the whole trip, every trip, ain't like the highlight video. Oh, right there, did you see that come up? It was either a little white bass or a little yellow bass. But real fishing just ain't, it ain't all highlights, people. 
I pulled this and plumb out of the water. I pulled it plumb out of his mouth then. That school of them minnows is over there, some small shad. Got that gulp under them. I thought, oh man, I got hit again. There's some fish under that school right there. Let's get them to hook up. Let's try this again. I'm gonna back up and hit it from a different angle here. It wouldn't hurt my feelings to catch some of them little white bass or some of them little yellow bass. We will, we will throw them in the cooler and take them with us. Those will be a worthy catfish bait for the next trip, which if I can, if I can stumble into some bait today, I'm gonna to go catfishing tomorrow, weather permitting. If I don't get bait today, well, I guess I'm going after bait tomorrow. <laughs> That'll make that decision real easy for me. If I ain't got bait, I ain't going catfishing. Oh, that's a fish. I thought I was maybe in something. That's a better one right there now. That's a better one. I don't know what that is. That might be one of them white bass or one of them yellow bass. That ain't bluegill. I'll tell you that. I'm going to back it up over here. Oh, no, it is a bluegill, too. It is. And it's a big one, man. Oh, man. Oh, man, that's a big one, y'all. Oh, man, look at this. Get over here, bluegill. That's a nice one right there. I thought that was a white bass or a yellow bass or something, man. That's another hand size. Oh, man. On the one-inch gulp, buddy. Look at that. Nice. Nice. He's he's not super thick, but I mean that's a he's tall, you know. I mean that's that's my end. There he is. I got my board here. I brought my board just in case I got some crappie today. Let's stick him on there. You want to get measured, bluegill? Yeah, he'll go he'll go eight and a quarter. He'll barely graze that eight and a quarter inch line. Nice, nice bluegill right there, man. You tricked me, Bluegill, in a good way. Man. Listen, my regular viewers, you know I like me some big Bluegill. You know I do, and that was a really good one. Let me get over here again. Right there around that, that school of menace, too. Makes me wonder if that Bluegill was just hanging out over there along the along them rocks on the shore or if they're just relating possibly to that school of minnows maybe following them around i guess we'll find out because i'm about to make me another cast over here man that was a good bluegill i like me them big bluegill like that y'all it's just uh them things fight hard i i, I think pound for pound bluegill are just a underrated fish species i guess because they're so so prevalent and relatively easy to catch that people just don't respect them but pound for pound man if you, if you got your tackle appropriate size for them they'll put you they'll put a fight up you can't come out here with a broomstick and expect to have any fun with them, but a good ultralight rod, some two pound line, and you can have some fun. And I'm having some fun right now. This is another one right here that's just a, just a pulling, and it's another one that's a dang good size bluegill, man. I have stumbled into some more here. Look at this one. This is another one that's gonna be comparable size to the last one. Same spot over there. Oh, now don't, don't fin me, buddy. Don't give me the fin. That's the fish equivalent of giving you the bird. Nice. That fish don't think it's nice though. He ain't nice. He told you to. He told you to hit the thumbs down button and unsubscribe. So he was telling you before he left there. I saw him. You couldn't hardly hear him. 
but he was mouthing it. I can read lips on them fish. I'm gonna throw in there again. If there's two there, there's probably at least two more. Here comes one. Here comes one. Oh man, y'all, I've stumbled into a little bluegill hotbed right here. And there's really, oh, that's another good one too, man. This is kind of one of them areas. There's some rocks right here, but I don't see any kind of debris in the water. I don't, there could be something down there. But what there is, is that school of minnows right there. How you doing, Bluegill? Say hi to the world. You got at least, at least four and a half people still watching right now at this point in the video. Probably 30 something minutes in. He can't believe it. He can't believe that there's four and a half people still watching. He, he said it must be friends and family because there ain't, ain't nobody out there in internet land still watching at this point. Oh crap, did I just throw over that tree? I think I'm okay. But there's a school of minnows right here that keeps swimming around this area. And I'm still, I still don't know what them bluegill, if they're relating to the school of shad or something over here. It doesn't matter to me as long as I keep catching them. <laughs> they can relate to whatever the school that's swimming right here in front of me. I'm just going to, I'm going to drop that jig just right over there under them and let them let it sink down through them like a, like a minnow that's died in that school and it's just following down. We'll see if we get something under it. If I don't get nothing here on this cast, we're going to, we're going to work our way back over here to where I was getting the big bluegill. That's exciting, y'all. I love me some big catfish. And you know, lately I've been super into the carp fishing too, but getting getting some big bluegill like that, that'll get my blood pumping too. If you don't like catching a big bluegill on an ultralight rod, there's something wrong with you. There's just something about me and you that's incompatible. It excites the heck out of me. Let's just let's just cozy up over here. Here's some more of them shad. This is a big school of them little tiny shad right here. Let's just throw over there again. Yeah, that's cool, man. I, I hope you can see that on camera because they are just in there by the millions. They were right here beside me. I'm working this jig down. Yep, there's something. There's something. I got down there under them. Back up again. I got a light breeze kind of pushing me against the bank, and I don't want to blow up on these fish. I don't want to spook them because this is a... This is some better quality. This one here ain't as big as the others, but he's still a good quality bluegill. Nice. Let me get back over here. Yeah, y'all, you know, it's one of them things, again, I don't have electronics on this kayak today. I don't have my live scope, but you don't need it for what I'm doing out here. It's, it's, it's helpful as far as, as eliminating water, you know, some of the dead space down through here, you can eliminate that and, and get on concentrations of fish with the live scope. But if you don't want to put the money into it, you don't want to put the time into it to learn how to use it, you don't have to. You can come out here, do what I'm doing today, just methodically work your way down. You'll catch some fish, catch them out here today. You know what else we catching? We catching a little water drop here on the lens. And again, I can't edit that out because we're going uncut here. So y'all just seen me clean my camera lens. One of these days, if this channel, if this YouTube channel ever amounts to anything, I might, I might hire me an assistant to clean that camera lens off when I get water droplets on it. But 
That day ain't today, people. It definitely ain't today, probably ain't tomorrow either. I'm gonna flip this thing upside down. We're gonna make another cast over here before this wind blows me. The wind, it's calm out here today. I mean, that wind's barely blowing, but it's kind of just, just pushing me that direction. And I don't want to get too close to where I'm catching these fish because I'm afraid I'll spook them. I'll definitely spook that school if I get on top of them, of the bait fish there. I almost feel like I need me a, a small spoon. I got a sumo spoon tied on my one of my skipjack rods behind me. But a little a little spoon to work under this school right here would probably be a ticket. Nothing on that cast. Let's throw over there on them rocks again. Come on, fishy. I ain't done catching y'all now. Don't be done biting. There's some more of you over there. Don't know what they're holding on over there, but they're they're there. Let's go back around. I'm gonna back up again and just hit it from this other angle here, just because I could probably I could probably work over there a little closer, but where I could cast up under them tree limbs. But again, I'm just paranoid about spooking them things. Come on, fishy. Give me one more off this spot. Don't have any, don't have any water movement out here, it don't appear like. All right, I'm making one more cast over here, y'all. And we're gonna, we're gonna keep moving on down. I just cast it over a spider web. I see a little worm or something hanging off of it right there. Looks like a little inch worm. It may just be a leaf on it. Man, there's just, these, these shad here are just in here by the millions, man. Just tiny little things, about an inch long. If we if we catch a fish today that spits one of them up, I'll show you that fish right next to the gulp minnow, and you can see the comparison of what they look like as far as color, size, all that. But it's very comparable. All these fish fish are eating smaller fish and so if you can mimic that with your lures whether you're using a gulp or another type of plastic if you just if you imitate what they're eating you got a chance at catching them and there's something there's something as i've blown over here where i was trying not to blow that's another oh man it's another big bluegill Look at this thing, y'all. Look at this thing right here. Oh man, that's a good one. Goodness gracious, look at that thing. That's another one right there. I'll just quickly just stick him on the board. I don't really care. Most of y'all probably don't either, but oh, now that, he's, that fish there, he said, by gosh, he said, if I don't care, he don't care either. He's getting the hell out of here and he gone. <laughs> All right, if he gone, one of his friends made me want to play with us. Let's go over and make another cast. I was getting ready to move on from that spot. But after that fish come along, I'm going to hit it again. This is just kind of one of them things, you know, you just, I've just stumbled into it. 
but you find areas like this. You, you work a, a stretch of the bank and you'll oftentimes hit a bunch of trees and a, a big section and just nothing going on. And all of a sudden, you'll find an area where fish are just stacked up. And it works like that catfishing too. You, know, you, you take a, a stretch of a ledge and you drift it or troll it and you make your way along and it's just dead, just nothing. And then all of a sudden, every rod goes down and it's because you just went through school. For whatever reason, they were there at that time. And that's what we found ourselves in here with these bluegill. I'm kind of surprised that we're not getting some other fish. You know, we had that one, it was either a white bass or a yellow bass, follow the jig up. I may, when I'm done catching these bluegill right here, I may throw a few more casts in here and vary my retrieve a little bit and see if we can't get another species. Sometimes, sometimes you vary your retrieve, you'll get a different kind of bite. I get a lot of bluegill just letting the thing sink. I get a lot of smallmouth letting it fall. But oftentimes the white bass and yellow bass, I catch them. I catch them on the retrieve. I'm just letting that thing, I'm just kind of letting it hang out right here under all these fish. I mean, this school of men is they're right here beside the kayak, but you know, without the motor and, and without electronics, there's really nothing to spook these fish. You know, there, I mean, there's no noise. To them, this kayak, here's a fish. It's a small one. But to them, this kayak's nothing more than just a, a log floating down the river. You know, it's something for them. It's cover for them. And these bait fish will just come right up to it. That bluegill there was another one wouldn't have made the cut today if I was doing a regular video. This and either. Boy, I jerked his jaw plumb out the water. Oh, that's a little large mouth right there. A little large jaw. He's about as big as a gulp. He wanted every second of his moment of fame. Where you at, fish? Let me see the cam. I'm going to shine the camera up under there see if I can see where you're at. I don't even know where he's at, folks. Listen, fish, we live here. We uncut now. That's a flip-flop. There's a flip-flop. He may have went down one of my scupper holes there under the seat. We're in bad shape. This fish, let me back off. I'm blowing up on this area while I'm dealing with the bass. Nothing like raw footage, y'all. I don't see him under there, people. I got two... I got two scupper holes under my seat. I think he went down them. Lord knows he was small enough to be flushed right down that scupper hole, like flushing him down the toilet. We're gonna go back over. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep casting at this area until I stop catching fish. Let's just, let's just cozy back up to it over here. Where am I at on time? Let me look at the time on this thing. If we, oh hell, we're just at 48. Man, I've caught a lot of fish here at 48 minutes. No, that dang bass ain't went down the scupper hole either. I hear him plopping around down there. Oh, buddy, that's a wasp right there. That thing come, where'd that thing come from? Get out of here, little wasp. Okay, that went down the scupper hole. There he is. Yeah, I got him. Get out of here. You disrupted the show, bass. That daggone wasp is going to disrupt the show, too. I ain't getting stung out here today. I swell up. I don't know where he came from. Just out of nowhere, man. Let's get us another fish. Now that all the chaos is done with. I tell you, between the turtle and the three-inch largemouth bass... 
We've had some disruptors out here today. Look at this wasp. He's coming back for me. He's coming back for my toe now. Kill that daggone thing. Here, get out of here, wasp. I think he went down my pedal drive slot there now. Boy, I tell you, I mean, again, between the bass, the turtle, and the wasp now, we got all kinds of disruptions going on. Let's see if I can, let me see if I can make a cast and actually focus on what's going on. I probably had 37 fish hit that last one and I didn't even know it because of the beat. Here he is again. This I killed that daggone thing that time, man. I ain't getting stung today, y'all. Now there'll be somebody out there give me hell about killing that bee. I was trying not to do it on camera, but I got a fish on too. Through all that, I got a fish on. He's probably swallowed this jig since I ain't got no pliers. I hate some wasps. You know, I'm all about the bees. I like having bees when I, I didn't plant a garden this year, but you know, them bees help pollinate stuff. They're very vital to the ecosystem. But all wasps do is just build nests on your porch and sting you. That's all they do. They ain't good for nothing. Get out of here, bluegill, before that wasp gets you too. I'll get lectured about that too. You watch and see. There'll be somebody, there'll be a, a, a wasp PhD in the comment box telling me everything I don't know about how vital wasps are to the ecosystem. The only thing I've ever seen a wasp do is, is sting me. I've been stung by them I don't know how many times. I got stung on the head by them one time. I don't like no wasp. I don't know where that can come from. I probably done him a favor because he looked kind of sickly anyway, not flying off. I'll still hear about it though. You watch and see. People in that comment box don't miss any opportunity to educate you. <laughs> I got a feeling there's more fish over here. That's what's most important right now is catching these fish that are hanging out over here. Nothing. All right, let's mix up our retrieve a little bit here. So there, I'm gonna let it sink down and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna just maybe a, a twitching retrieve as I reel it in. I feel like, I feel like I probably ain't gonna get nothing on that. That school's up here near the surface. I feel like I'm gonna need to be fishing under these, under this school. I may do a, I'm gonna try to just reel it in, stop it, let it fall, reel it in, stop, let it fall. We'll try that. down here get turned I'm gonna make I know y'all sick of me cast into this spot I just want to make a few more casts over there been too many good bluegill caught right there for me to just not not milk it for all it's worth Oh, there's one. I didn't even know he was on. Uh, if this is a bluegill, it's a good one. Whatever it is, it's got some, got some strong head shakes. Get up 
here. Let's see you. I just want to get a look at you. That's another big bluegill. That's another big bluegill, man. Look at that thing. Oh my gosh. Look at that thing right there, man. This may be the biggest one of the morning right here. Nice. Look at that. Look at look how thick this one is, man. That one's got some shoulders on him. Listen, fish, you're gonna have to get you one of them Suzanne Summers thigh masters. You need your lower half to look as big as you as your big half or your top half. I can't get my words out. I can't get him under control. You're gonna get stung by that wasp down there, that dead wasp. He's a zombie wasp now. Walking dead down there. Lay on that board a minute. Ah, he's another one that's probably barely. He might graze that eight and a quarter inch line, but thicker, man. That one there. Again, his upper body looks like some of them women from the 80s that uses the Suzanne Summers thigh master. I bet you that fish there. Them, them fish, they're behind on the times, you know. They're, they, they're about 20 years behind us humans. That's why we're able to catch them. I feel like I'm 20 years behind too because I've got my jig all wrapped around my, my line there. But I was going to say, I bet you, because these fish here, they don't have internet. They ain't got DVDs. They still on old VHS tapes. I bet that fish right there, I bet you he's got one of them Richard Simmons sweating to the oldies VHS tapes. Or Jazzercise or something like that. I bet you that's what that fish does for a workout. They ain't, that fish ain't had the opportunity to know what P90X is yet because they ain't got DVDs. He don't know about no paleo diet or nothing. That's why he's still eating gulp minnow. He got something all over me. Tell you, he puked something up right there. Nasty thing. That's a good one though, man. I mean, thick. Speaking of Suzanne Summers, I wonder what ever happened to her. I tell you, when I was a kid and she was on Three's Company, you remember TV show Three's Company with Jack Tripper? She was hot back then. Janet wasn't. Now, Janet on that show, the other roommate, she wasn't very attractive, but Chrissy, Suzanne Summers, now she was. Now I don't know, I don't know where she's at now, if she's even still alive, I don't know. I think she made a fortune on that thigh master. Who knows? She might be watching this video right now. You never can tell. Somebody, somebody that she's related to, maybe a, a distant cousin who got, who likes fishing, maybe watch this video and be like, "Oh my gosh." Aunt Suzanne just got a shout out in the kayak catfish video and he'll go show it to her at the next family reunion. She'd be like, who the hell is that guy? And, and I wonder if he'd be interested in buying a thigh master. I bet she's got some in her closet somewhere. I know good and well. I mean, I know she sold a bunch of them. I bet she didn't sell out of them. Get back over here, get repositioned. This whole damn video is going to be me fishing this one spot right here. I just can't leave it when I'm catching fish like that, though. I'm out here today to catch fish, y'all. Somebody in the last ultralight video, uncut video, said I ought to mix up the baits on these uncut videos. And I'm like, well, these gulp minnows, every type of plastic I have tried, I just, I catch way more fish with the gulp than any of the plastic. I ain't, listen, I ain't trying to sell you no gulp here. I mean, I got an affiliate link down there in the video description. I'll get a little commission whatnot, but I could put an affiliate link down there for any type of plastic. I ain't got no deal with gulp. I just use them because I like using them because they just, they just flat out work, man. They just catch fish. 
And when I come out on an ultralight trip like today where I'm just wanting to catch a bunch of fish, you know, I'm wanting to get a lot of action. Why the hell would I want to use another bait where I know I'm not going to catch as many fish? So, I don't know. Seems like a dumb comment to me, but other people out there want me to use other types of, of lures, I guess. I'm going to keep using what I want. People get tired of watching it. Well, I'll just, I'll just stop filming it. I'll still come out here and fish how I want. I just won't film it. <laughs> I'm out here to catch fish, people. I think I may be about done catching fish off this spot. I think there's probably still some of them down there, but after you catch a few, and them other bluegill, the smarter ones, you know, the ones that wasn't ready to commit, they see their friends get get wrinkled out of there. They get the lockjaw. They're like, well, we got all these minnows right here that we can eat. Why are we gonna eat that one with the hook in it? Man, there's a bunch of them here. They're just all kind of hanging out right here in this area. nothing let me just let me just skip one up under there and see what's going on i don't get nothing on this cast i'm gonna go down a little further and see if i can get some fish on the other side of where i was getting them at down there i thought that might have been a fish but i think i was just in something right then Nothing. Well, let's do this, y'all. Let's switch out our gulp right quick. And then I'm gonna make my way on downstream here. Where are we at on time? A little over an hour. We're gonna go a little while longer on video. I'm going all morning out here for my own personal enjoyment, but for video purposes, we'll cut this off hour and a half or so, hour and a half, two hours. Some people in the audience are like, ha ha, Justin, we done, we done cut it off way sooner than that. <laughs> they, some of you though, watch it all the way through. I've been impressed with the view. The views ain't been particularly great on two out of the three previous uncut videos but the watch time from the people who have watched has been excellent i do think there's an audience for this kind of thing although albeit not as big an audience as my normal videos but these people that want to watch we'll do it I said i like doing this style of fishing i'm out here anyway and if i can save myself time by not having to edit it sounds like a win the wind has blown it's again very light breeze but it's just enough it's blowing this stick right here where i was casting so i guess that's mother nature's way of saying justin move on down i'm gonna throw right over here right here's where i've been getting them i'm gonna throw over here kind of to the right and we'll see if we can find some more you know it may be a situation where there was more fish all the way down through here and i was just kind of on the on the edge of them possibly we'll see nothing on that let's go around a little bit further right there and see what's going on Yeah, Suzanne Summers, I don't know. I don't know what's up with her. I don't know what's up with Janet. Jack Tripper, he died a long time ago. He was, I think he was a fairly young man when he died. I think he had a heart attack or something. Memory serves me. John Ritter, I think was his name. But Janet and Chrissy may still be alive. Old 
Barney Fife, Don Knotts, he was on that show too. Uh, he's, of course, been dead a long time. That's a good show. They don't make TV shows like they did back in the 80s. Three's Company and Night Court and ALF. Those were the days, man. When I was a kid, you had, on Friday nights, you had TGIF. You had Full House and Steve Urkel, Family Matters and Step by Step. Uh, Boy Meets World on there. And all kinds of good shows. Nowadays, I don't know what kids watch anymore. Video games, I guess, is what they watch. I got another fish right here. Let's see what this is. That's another bluegill right there. Another nice one, too. Another nice bluegill right here, man. There are some good quality bluegill in this area, buddy. Oh, whoa, 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 wait. Hey, hey. Three notches, buddy. Got to calm it down. No. Well, all right then. All right then. Miss me and that fish was in some kind of contract dispute. I wasn't aware of. He wanted, he wanted to hold me up for more money right here. And I ain't paying this fish no more. He said he's gonna call his union representative. Tell him all about me. What that fish don't know is I've caught his whole damn union out here this morning. Ain't nobody left for him to call. He could call his mama, but I probably done caught her too. That fish right there though, you know, again, these fish, they're back in the eighties. They're 20 years, 40 years, I guess, behind us. Listen at me talking like the eighties was 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm trapped in I'm trapped in a time warp or something. I was gonna say if that fish was gonna call anybody, he'd probably have to go to a payphone, borrow a quarter. When Travis Tritt, here's a quarter, call somebody who cares. Oh Travis Tritt. I like some Travis Tritt. I've been to his concerts, I think three times three definitely two, maybe three times. He puts on a hell of a show. I was wanting to go see Lost Dog Street Band. And I've just, they come to town a few years ago and I had to work, I'd have missed it. I was back and I still had the real job, but I missed it then. And then COVID hit, I missed it. And then I had bought tickets to them last year, but we had another big COVID outbreak going on in Knoxville and they had the show anyway, but me and the girlfriend talked about it and I was like, well, you know, my parents are older, her parents are older. We really shouldn't be with it. With COVID had been so rampant at that point in time in our area, we decided it was probably best for us not to go. And so we didn't. And they had a show scheduled here in August of this year. And we were, we were waiting to buy tickets for it because of the universe just being against us going <laughs> the previous times. And I'll be damned if the Benjamin Todd, the lead singer there, he got COVID, so they had to reschedule the show. So I don't know if I'll ever get to go see Lost Dog Street Band in concert or not, but I'm sure they put on an amazing show if I ever do get to see them. But Travis Tritt though, hell of a show. I ain't been to a whole lot of concerts. I'm not a big concert goer. I've been Travis Tritt, been Vince Gill. Goo Goo Dolls was probably the best concert I've ever been to. They put on a hell of a show. They're uh, another band from my from my youth that was awesome, but they're still pretty good even now nowadays. That's a lot of more fun facts nobody wants to know about me. 
that's the kind of thing you get on these uncut videos and we got to talk about something it's just like you out here in the boat with me or the kayak with me but we can't be fishing out here in the kayak together because you know you ain't sitting in my lap unless you're a hot woman and if you are a hot woman in my audience sitting in my lap well we probably ain't doing much fishing so this is about as, this is about as close as it gets right here people we're just gonna make our way on down through here now though that wind all of a sudden just got a little stronger didn't it a little wind gust coming through it can just quit any time now i don't want to deal with no wind today nice and calm we got started all right let's keep let's keep trucking along here we'll eventually come across another another school i'm still seeing this big old big old school of minas or shad i call them minas they're they're actually probably threadfin shad there's been a spawn recently for the minas to be that size or the shad to be that size they're in here by the millions and they're right up here along the shoreline and i i have to believe that there's a bunch of fish that's been feeding on them I can't believe we ain't seen any skipjack or white bass busting anywhere out here. I maybe should have went back to where I was at there last week doing the other uncut video, but I really thought out here today, this section would just be blowing up with skipjack and, and white bass, but I've, I've thought wrong once or twice in my life. It don't happen often, but I am wrong occasionally. There's somebody in the audience saying I was wrong for killing that wasp. I was wrong about calling that a mud turtle. I was wrong for using a gulp minnow today instead of some other plastic bait that they think is the best ever. I'm getting impatient, y'all. I, I feel like we've went a long time without catching. It's probably only been a few minutes in reality. But you get spoilt real quick with the ultralight rod. It'll make you impatient. When you're catching them one after another after another, and all of a sudden you have a little five-minute break between fish. You're like, what the hell am I doing wrong? Where'd they go? <laughs> it spoils you. Another problem too, when I get when I get a little impatient, I start fishing too fast. And instead of letting this thing sink far enough down, fishing it slow to get a bite, I I speed up, which causes me to get less bites, which causes me to get impatient, more impatient. It's a downward, it's a downward spiral from there. I just have to be consciously aware of what I'm doing. Which is good advice for anybody. Whenever you're fishing, I mean, if you get bit, you were doing something right. So keep doing it. Do it again. Whatever you were doing, do it again until it stops working. But you got to be paying attention to know what you was doing when you had the success, when you got the bite. Up, up, up. There he is. I saw my line twitch. This feels like another good one right here. This feels like another good fish. I think it's probably a bluegill. Yeah, it is. It is. That's another really good fish. They're just all up and down this shoreline, man. I got some good bluegill last week, and I was, you know, a few miles upriver from here. But I think it's just this time of year, these bluegill, they're, they're, they're up shallower. 
and I'm able to catch them. These big bluegill, I think they spend a lot of their time deep throughout the summer months. That's another one though. I guarantee you, we put him on the board. He's probably, he probably won't lay there long enough for me to do it, but I, I bet you he's probably in that eight inch range. Hey, 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 oh, 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 oh. He's gonna fend me. Lay on this board a second, would you? Would you, hey. This may be the only time in your life you ever get measured, Bluegill. He said he don't care. Now that in there, he's shy eight inches. He looked bigger than he was. Doggone thing, didn't want to lay there. He might have knew he wasn't eight inches and he wasn't as big as his friends and he's embarrassed. You know, his, his friends, they'll call him a runt the rest of the day because he didn't measure up to them. That's still a good bluegill though. I'll throw over there again too. I'll work around some leaves over here. Your line gets caught on a leaf with this 164th ounce jig head and it just comes to a stop. It don't sink anymore. Oh, something hit me. I had cast that out a little ways too. This is another one right here though that's a pulling man. Back off my drag a smidge. My drag's lately has been messing up on me. It's time to retire this reel. I'm gonna try to finish out the year with it and figure out what I want. Get up here, bluegill. You another quality bluegill, man. Look at that, folks. Man. Let's fix our... He's got our gulp tore up, but I don't mind him. That was, that was a good enough fish. I don't mind him tearing up the gulp. You know, I don't want to jinx it, but hell, I don't think I've, I don't think I've broke off but one jig today. And that was in the turtle. That wasn't even in a real snag, so. It's time. My gosh, I'm way overdue to be breaking off. This winter though, I'll sit down at some point and do some research. My friend Randy, Randy Go Trout Magnet Man YouTube channel, he is he is the guy as far as I'm concerned on when it comes to ultralight fishing. I mean, he he loves ultralight fishing. Catches thousands and thousands of fish every year. Now he uses, as his channel name suggests, Trout Magnet Man. He likes the trout magnet plastics. And I mean, he just wears them out, wears out the fish, variety of species. But he is like, I mean, he's really into the ultralight gear. He's like an ultralight enthusiast. I mean, he, he tries out a bunch of different rods and reels and lines. He does a lot of that, that Japan gear, the JDM, which is like really high end gear. And you know, me, I'm kind of, I'm still rocking these old St. Croix rods here that I've had for years. But uh, Randy, I'll, I'll research what reels that he's suggesting. I may get me a, a good ultralight reel. This here, this little $30 Walmart Abu Garcia job has, has lasted a long time. I've definitely got my money's worth out of it, but we are getting to that point where the drag is slipping sometimes, or if I tighten it down too much, it don't give it all. Here's a fish. This is another one right here that's gonna pull some of the drag. But I may break down and, and invest in a good quality reel on the next one I get. Yeah, if you're interested in ultralight fishing though, folks, and you, you wanna learn about the, the various high quality options on the market. Randy's the guy, trout magnet man, because I mean, he, he knows his stuff. He's into it. He can tell you what to buy and how to get it. Because getting, 
getting that stuff, those JDM rods, you know, there's no, here's another fish. Well, all of a sudden right here, I'm on some more, buddy. I need to back off this area a little bit. But he can tell you how to source that stuff because, you know, them JDM products, a lot of them brands, they're just not in stores here. There's just not a not a big enough market for it here. There's not a lot of not a lot of ultralight anglers here in the United States. Most people that's ultralight fishing here in the U.S. are using little, you know, little four foot ultralight rods from Walmart and. You know, you can catch fish doing that, but you're going to have a lot better experience if you get you a sensitive rod. That fish right there, he fell victim to a sensitive rod. You got a knot on your head, fish. Look like a daggone pump knot. Some woman's hit him with a frying pan. Hey, somebody in my audience thinks I ought to put him in a frying pan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back up here. I'm going to get out here a little ways off of that and try to make some more casts. There's... You know, just another school of these fish right here. And what's holding those fish on that spot, who knows? It could just be, could be that big school of shad, you know, for all I know. They're just, you know, maybe a, a school of the bluegill kind of hanging out around them there. And that jig, once it falls down below that school, easy meal, you know, that they were waiting on. So either way, I don't know what's holding those fish over there, but I know they're holding over there. <laughs> so that's the only thing that matters is that there are some fish right there and I want to catch them. Oh, right over there. See over there in the distance? That's a school of bass or skipjack. That's encouraging. We're getting, we're getting on into the morning here now. I didn't come out here right at sunrise because of the fog. I, I waited a little while. I didn't get out here until, uh, hell, I don't know what time it is now. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's well after eight o'clock now. But that's the first school of anything I've seen busting. That's encouraging. Maybe they just starting a little later today. Might be an afternoon bite or something. I don't know. I hope to find something out here this morning, though, because otherwise I ain't going to have no catfish bait for tomorrow. I mean, yeah, I could save some of these bluegill, but I just, I don't really like using bluegill for catfish bait. I do use it periodically throughout the year just for convenience and whatnot but it ain't a good bait in my opinion not around here a lot of places it is but around here i don't do very good with it so if i can get something else i would rather have something else and if i can't get something else today then i guess i'll do that tomorrow Well, I thought we was on some fish right here, but I may be mistaken. I may have done caught them all or spooked them. Nope. Well, something hit me. I had a little bump. A little tap, tap, tap a as Happy Gilmore said. There he hit it. Oh boy, here we go. I wonder if that ain't a bass. Buddy, he took off now. If that's a bluegill, that's a good one. He's out here in front of me. I'm going to work him around over on this side. Run him out here a little bit deeper in case he's a tree or something over here. I don't know what this is. This is... Oh, man, did you see that? He come up out of the water. That's a bluegill. He breached the surface right there. Oh, man. He come jumping up out of the water. I wonder if something wasn't chasing him. That's another thick fish, man. Wow. Goodness gracious, man. Get the shoulders on him. Like a daggone 
football lineman. Boy, Tennessee ought to call and sign you to a contract, Bluegill. Goodness gracious, man. And here I am sitting right on top of where I was, where I just caught that fish at. Let me just drop a jig down right here. Let me just go vertical on it here. My line was almost just vertical down when I hooked him. That was another good one though, man. I thought I had a, I thought I had a little bass on. And then when he come up jumping, I was like, holy cow. All right here, I'm gonna take the camera though. I hope you can see them on the camera right there. Thousands, maybe millions of shad. Right here, they're just kind of hanging out right beside me. I'm gonna have to move though, y'all. I'm gonna have to circle around. I'm sitting right on top of where I was wanting to cast. Let me just back off. Here's a boat. That's the first boat we've seen out here today. Here we go. Let's turn back around this way, why don't we? Circle back this way. Hit this from a different angle. See if I can keep myself a little farther off of it. A lot of them fish there were out farther than what I thought they'd be. That's exciting though, man. I, I tell you, if you don't, if you don't get pumped up over a big bluegill, my channel, I mean, I got the catfish videos maybe you'd be interested in, but you definitely <laughs> interested in these ultralight videos if you don't like a big bluegill. Let's make another cast over here. I know there's some more right there. They just, I ain't getting them ever cast, but they there. I'm not real sure how deep I'm catching these fish. I'm not sure really how deep I'm setting. I think I'm probably, kayak where I'm at now is probably 20 something feet deep. But where I'm casting to, who knows, you know, because it just comes off at such a steep angle. Again, it's one of them things that's kind of a, kind of one of them details I probably don't even need to be thinking about because all I know is if I cast a jig over in that area and I let it sink far enough, <laughs> I'll get bit. So I guess the depth is kind of irrelevant. Just a matter of being patient long enough to let it sink down. Oh, something come up after me right there. I wonder what that was. That was a big flash. I don't know if that was a skipjack or a bass. Whatever it was, is a bigger mark. I was reeling that thing in when he swiped at it. And here I have blown back up against the shore. Doggone it. know what that was. I wonder if that was, I mean, if that was a skipjack, they might be just hanging out. It might be a situation where I can work my other jigs kind of under these schools at faster speeds, the heavier jigs and just, and maybe be able to pull off some skipjack, even though they're not busting, they don't seem to be real active today. I may get a few over here. Make this last cast here and we're gonna move on down the bank. I think that boat went in that creek behind me there. I really ain't made much progress down through here, y'all, for the 
hour and something I've been fishing, I really ain't covered much water. I thought I'd take a big stretch of this bank today, but you know, when the fish keep biting and you spend five, 10 minutes on a spot like this, just working it and you know, time, time passes. But you know, come out with the goal of covering some water, but really only need to cover as much as you have to to find fish. I didn't have to cover it long today to get on some dang good bluegill. I'm just curious though about that dang flash though. That was a bigger mark that come up. Curi Y'all, curiosity is getting the best of me. I can't help myself here. I can't help myself. I'm gonna bust out the skipjack rod here just for a minute. And I'm gonna make a cast kind of parallel with this bank. Let them jig sink down and work them back through this school of minnows here and just see what happens. Because I don't know what that was, but I wanna find out if there's, if there's a school of skipjack sitting under these things. It's quite possible I can trigger them. I may even work this kind of slow through here. These are one eighth ounce jig heads for my skipjack. I got crappie magnets on. Let's make a few casts. It never hurts to try. I'm on. I'm gonna do some trolling out here too before I leave this morning. I'll do that off camera because nobody wants to watch me pedal around. But I need to find me some bait today. Let's make one more cast right quick. I'm gonna let this one sink down and I'm gonna, I'm gonna work this some kind of erratic. All right, we'll get back to doing some ultralight in here. Who knows? You know, it could have been a, I just saw a big flash right there. It could have been a bass to come up and swipe that thing. I just thought maybe it was a skipjack. Maybe they're kind of hanging out. Maybe they are, but they're just kind of inactive, you know, but they're going to follow these schools of, of shad around. I mean, that's their food source. You find threadfin shad, schools of them, skipjack typically aren't far away. It's just a matter of getting your bait in front of them and triggering them. Hopefully I'm gonna trigger a few at some point this morning. So I need me some. I got some in the freezer, but I like using fresh whenever possible. Fresh is always best. Come on, fishy. Leave me another tug on the line. They, this school of shad, though, is still all the way down. They're just hugged off the, or setting off the bank here. They're all the way down through here. Let's make a cast right over there. I'm gonna get bit on that cast. Somebody bet me that nickel. I'm gonna be 10 cents in debt time I'm done this video today. Nothing yet. Right there. Oh, that's, a, that's a good fish. Whatever that is, is a good fish. That's a good one. I just took a nickel off somebody that bet me too. When y'all hit me up with that nickel, I guarantee you somebody took that bet. You owe me, doggone it. 
Is this another bluegill? What is this? Bush it is. It's another bluegill. Oh, he just spit it too. I don't know about that, y'all. Maybe I owe you a nickel since I didn't land him. I didn't land him, so maybe maybe I owe you the you know uh, that that bet's null and void. That's null and void because I got bit. I can't remember what I said. I can't remember if I said I was going to get bit on that cast. Because if I if I said that, if we bet a nickel that I was going to get bit, then I, I technically I did get bit. I just didn't land it. But I don't know if I said if I was going to get bit or if I was going to catch fish. Big difference in the wording there. It's all about the technicality to get me out of paying up. That was a good bluegill though. Just didn't land him. Just come unbuttoned for some reason. I'll let that sink down. I'd let that other jig sink down a good ways. Here we go. Here we go. This one too, I'd let it sink down. A little deeper over there. Come here, bluegill. This is another one. This one ain't as big as the other one. But he's still a quality fish. That's a... Almost all of these bluegills today, y'all, have been in that 7 to 8 inch range. This is another one that'll be right in that, right in that size class. Dang good time, man. Let's fix this thing. I may need to put me a new one on. This in here is getting a little tore up. Yeah, it ain't pretty. I'm going to throw over there, though. We're going to try to get another fish or two on it. I'll switch it out. I probably need to wrap up this video whenever I switch that thing out because this is running long. But boy, there's been a lot of fish caught today and however long I've been filming. A lot of fish. A turtle. Here's another fish. Right on cue. Oh man, he's pulling too. This is another good one right here. This is another good one right here, buddy. It's bluegill. I saw him. I'm gonna back up here. Get, try to get him out of these dang trees. That's another really good fish. Yes, buddy. Look at this thing right here. Holy cow. Look at this bluegill right here, y'all. Oh my gosh. Look at this thing. That is a, just a huge bluegill, man. I mean, that's another palm sizer right there. Good gosh. He ain't going to want to lay on this board. Let's just... Let's just put him on here a second. Oh, curiosity getting the best of me. You lay still now for me. Lay oh, no, hey, hey. You know what? And these bluegill. I don't know what it is. That bluegill right there, he was so big, he should have been proud of himself. But I don't know, maybe he's a humble bluegill. He didn't want to show up his friends. Some of them that we've caught it ain't been as big as him. That was a dang good time though, man. I mean, what a fight. These fish are pulling so hard today too. Let's just go over here and make another cast. I mean, we really, I'm gonna show you something here. Look at this right here, y'all. So I started right here at the edge of this, that little outcropping right there is where that log comes off. That's where I started at. I have not made, I mean, you're talking 150 yards maybe, um, maybe 200 yards down through here. That's all the water I've covered in an hour and a half or so out here now. But it's just been getting on these little concentrations of fish and they've just been, I mean, you get bluegill like this, buddy. It's hard to, it's hard to fish too fast because I don't want to, I don't want to miss a single one of them. You know, I want to keep throwing in there to these areas until they quit biting. Man, oh man. I'm gonna make a, 
I'm gonna make a few more casts on this spot, see if I can get some more. Here's another one. I'm gonna tighten, boy, my drag slipped again. I lost the fish because of it. Whenever we switch out this gulp, we'll wrap up the video. This is running long. Again, my live stream audience, and the consensus seemed to be between one and two hours on these uncut videos. So we'll wrap this up and then I'll, I'm gonna keep making my way along. I ain't done fishing. I'm gonna do some more ultralight fishing here. Here's one. Oh man, it's another hard pulling one. But I'm gonna do some more ultralight fishing and then do some trolling at some point. See if I can come across some white bass or some skipjack. At least hopefully get me enough for a day of catfishing tomorrow. That's another right here slab, man. Just a daggum slab of a bluegill. Look at this thing, man. Holy cow. Wow. Goodness. What do you think? Boy, that man, that gulf's looking rough. <laughs> it's rough. We're going to get another one on it, though, maybe. If I can cast over there. I'll just whack that tree. I'm going to try to catch a fish here before this wind blows me up on these trees right here. I guess it'd help if I closed the bell, wouldn't it? Daggummit. on wind. Let's back it up. All right, get repositioned here. I'm gonna catch me another. Next cast, y'all. Somebody, somebody, pull out your nickel. Get you go in there and ask your granny if you can get in her change purse. Get a nickel out of it. So we're catching a fish on this cast, and I want you to bet me that I ain't gonna do it. Cause I'm gonna. We'll get one right here any second now. That thing's gonna take off. Be pulling drag. Don't tell you, don't tell you granny you getting in her change purse to get gambling money and she won't approve of it. Tell her, tell her the ice cream truck's coming or something. Oh, icy man. I didn't get a fish on that cast, y'all. You should have bet me. I don't know if you could buy anything at the ice cream truck for a nickel. But you'd have been, you'd have been a nickel closer to getting you an ice cream bar or a slushy. fishy I may have I may have caught enough here on this area that I'm spoken I may have to move along here I'm pretty confident I'm gonna keep finding these these little schools of bluegill all the way down through here though just based on what I've seen in this this stretch through here it's a dang good morning Again, I love catching me some big catfish, but gosh, this is fun too. Nothing. All right. Well, let's, let's make our way along, we say. We're going to fish until I either need to switch out that gulp minnow or until I break off. One of the two. That's a lousy cast lousy i'd say it's the worst cast of the day but it ain't even close I wonder where that old turtle's at what do you think he, that turtle's gonna do the rest of the day you think he's sold that that jig head yet you think he's still showing it off to his friends and family i bet he's proud of it though he may keep it, you know, souvenir, like getting a a foul ball at a at a baseball game or something, you know. That fish may 
I mean, he may keep it forever, just a, a memento. Or he could be selling that thing too. It could be at a pawn shop right now. I may be able to go get that same jig head back at the local pawn shop. I don't know what a pawn shop would pay for it, but you know that fish was or that turtle was desperate. He'd he'd probably take anything. Like him, like him old meth heads stealing people's power tools out of their out of their trucks. You know they go pawn them for ten dollars to get them a get them a bump of meth or whatever whatever they call it a hit a bump. I don't even know what to call it these days. There's somebody out there in my audience. I guarantee you they know. They done tuned out though. The meth heads, they, they watch. They ain't got the attention span to sit through an hour and a half of this crap. They done tuned out a long time ago. The only people that are still left watching at this point in the video is, I, I don't even know what to say about you. You damn good people though, I know that. To stick with me this long, you good people. I've got this line wrapped around a daggone tree branch here. Yeah. You good people. You probably appreciate some Three's Company TV shows. Hopefully one of you's out there knows about Suzanne Summers. Can maybe call and check on her, see if she's still doing okay. Maybe ask her how the thigh master business is going. Oh, Richard Simmons sweating to the oldies too. I don't know whatever happened to him either. One of you might know him too. I guarantee you they somebody out there in my audience though that is still watching to this point that owns a thigh master and has a sweating to the oldies VHS tape. Guarantee it. Because people my age and older, they don't throw nothing away. Like all them old VHS tapes, you still got them. Every last one of them. I mean, y'all got, y'all got Porky's and Smokey and the Bandit on VHS. I think I got the DVDs of both of them movies, but again, outdated technology, but I still got it. Because you don't throw nothing out. Them VCRs are valuable nowadays, too. My mom got me watching Harry Tornado on, on YouTube. I don't watch him all the time, but I tune in sometimes. And he's got an eBay selling channel. I was hung and something. I thought I had me a fish. I set the hook in it. I got it free, though. But he, he buys stuff and sells it on eBay. And them VCRs he comes across, them things go for good money on there, man. People, I don't know why they want to buy a VCR for. Especially an old used one, but they go for more now than what you could have bought one new for back 10, 15 years ago. I guess they want to watch their Smokey and the Bandit and Porky's VHS tapes. It's the only thing I can figure. That hair tornado though, man, doing that eBay resale and stuff, going to flea markets and thrift stores and whatnot. He's got a good racket going on that on that YouTube stuff, man. He's doing good. He's killing it on there. I'm convinced there's an audience for everybody. No matter what you're into, whether it's buying stuff at a flea market and reselling it or going ultralight fishing here in a kayak. There's an audience for everybody. There's, there's a group of people out there in this world that will relate to you no matter what it is you're into. There's somebody out there with similar interest. May not be a million people, may not be 20 million people, but there's, there's, there's people. There's a community out there. No matter what you do, there's a community for you. You just got to find them. And YouTube is a good way to find those people.
because people go to YouTube and they search for stuff. YouTube's basically a big search engine is what it is. People think it's a video platform, but it's like the number two search engine in the world. And people, they interested in something, you know, they end up, I don't know, researching mud turtles. They want to learn about it. They go to YouTube and they some mud turtle expert on there or somebody that has a pet mud turtle and they watch them videos and all of a sudden they're like, hey, I like that person. I don't know if anybody, I don't know if anybody will search for my video and find, searching for mud turtles and will find that one, but if there is somebody in the mud turtle community and they see my jig head and gulp minnow come up for sale, I hope they notify me. We're going we're gonna to file a stolen goods report down there at the police station on that thing. That, that thing robbed me. He went right over my prop there on my pedal drive just to break me off because he knew I was going to try to get it back. He's a smart turtle. He didn't look very smart. He was smart. Well, here I said I was going to wrap this video up soon and now I can't hardly get another fish to finish tearing up my gulp minnow. Went through a little dead stretch here. Let's keep plugging along. I still see these minnows, man. They all over right here. You had a dip net with a small enough mesh. I could just reach down. Here's a fish finally. Here we finally hooked up again. You just reach down there and dip net them things. This is another good bluegill right here too. I mean, these big bluegill are just all up and down through here, man. Goodness gracious, look at this one. Look at this. Every time I think I've caught the biggest bluegill of the morning, I think the next one I catch here, this is one of them situations. I think this is now the biggest one of the day. Look at that, my gosh. So thick. I mean, the meat on that thing. Here's, here's what I'm gonna do. None of you bluegill wanna get measured. I'm gonna turn this board down like this. You're gonna be forced to, bluegill, whether you want to or not. Oh yeah, that's the biggest one of the day thus far. Let's see if we can get him. Will his tail touch the nine inch mark? I think he barely grazes it there. That's definitely the longest bluegill of the morning. And I think weight-wise, just from looking at the girth on him, man, I think that's the biggest one of the morning right there, y'all. I'll tell you what, let's do. I ain't tore that gulp up yet, but we, we it looks like an hour and 53 minutes into this video. So, you know, it's running long, but it is what it is. It's raw, it's uncut. You've seen it all out here today. Every cast I've made, the good ones, the bad ones, the ones that's been in the tree, the ones that's been in the mud turtle, you've seen it all. And you've seen a lot of fish caught because this is just a, for whatever reason, these big bluegill, they're up here today and they're feeding, man. And that gulp minnow, yeah, it's just, it catches them. It, it catches the hell out of some fish. That's why I love fishing it. But I think I'm gonna wrap up this video. I'm not done fishing. I'm gonna just keep going right here and just keep making my way on down a little while. I'm probably gonna fish ultralight here another, I'll probably give it another hour or two, just have some fun and then start trolling. I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work up through here where these, where all these shad are with the jig. And I got another rod here with the sumo spoon. I'm gonna pull these baits up through here trolling. I may work out in the main channel a little bit here too. I have to believe that there's some skipjack and some white bass here. They're just not up and feeding right now for whatever reason, but I have to believe they're here. So I'm gonna try to spend a little time and get me some catfish bait for tomorrow. Otherwise, well, that was the first time my camera overheated all stinking morning. At least it waited till the end when I was doing the whole closing spill. I guess the camera said I was rambling on too long. But anyway, if you've watched this whole video, if you've stuck with me this long, if you're enjoying this kind of content, thanks. As long as y'all keep watching, 
I'm gonna keep making it because I'm having a lot of fun out here. If you can't tell on the video, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.